Incidentally, let's uh, wish them all well. This is their day. I heard a little story not long ago to the effect that someone asked a gentleman, did you get any cards on Father's Day? He said, yes, I got them. Most of them were bills from Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, anyway. This morning we have an interesting and I think valuable subject, and that is the importance of experience from living, being properly remembered. Pythagoras of Samos was the one who introduced the discipline of remembering, uh, the uh, retrospective exercise in which the individual periodically, if possible daily, went back over the records of the day to find out what he had learned, what experience had done for him or to him. Now most persons are not very good at working with this nowadays because of lack of self-discipline and because of our peculiar mental complexes at the moment we can very carefully eliminate the important message from anything that happens to us. If it interferes with our pleasures, if it is inconsistent with our passing moods, we promptly forget it. We do not gain the important lesson that comes to those who remember well their own attitudes, their own mistakes, their own relationships with life, and what they have learned from these episodes and interludes. So to the Pythagorean theory can be added a problem of building a proper record of ourselves, building a proper consecutive account of our own daily experiences. Years ago, young people used to keep diaries. And I think the Pythagorean discipline has to do with the idea of a daily recording, not only of the things that happen to us, but what we do about them, how we try to solve the different situations that arise. Also, in the course of time, this type of discipline reminds us of a number of, in, of invaluable hints one of which is the tendency that most of us have of passing opinion on subjects with which we are not well informed. If we have this exercise and we have a false opinion about a certain subject and we discover our mistake, then this should be duly recorded for future record and evidence. And if we make the same type of mistake two or three times, then it is time for us to sit down and analyze our own attitudes on those subjects wherein we are at fault. Now, it's very easy to make this kind of a mistake in which we simply pass judgment and uh, assume that we are right, and then we have to wait for the consequences. Now, the consequences may not affect us personally, we may only realize that we took the wrong stand at a certain moment. But the tendency to take this wrong position should be remembered because it is evidence of characteristics within ourselves. The only way we can really learn the functions of our own minds and emotions is to record the consequences of attitudes. The moment we express some attitude, we set an action in motion. And Pythagoras believed that all incidents are in motion. The individual who starts something must live with it to the bitter end in some way. Now, there are many things that we do not need to record particularly. But we can, by careful noting and writing down our attitudes, gradually force ourselves to face ourselves. And this is very important. The, the average daily occurrence that is n normal in the affairs of living, do, these do not need to be recorded. But any unusual attitude of our own, any unusual attitude we take to other people, 
we have a right to put it down and say to ourselves, why did I hold that attitude? Why did I react in this particular way? Was it wise? Was it unwise? Today, of course, people are not much interested in whether it's wise or unwise. They want to do what they please. But as a result of disciplining these situations, the person can advance in his own unfoldment uh, with the very important phase of self-discipline. Today there are a great many religious organizations that have various esoteric exercises and meditations and prayers and all kinds of affirmations in relationship to daily living. But up to now, the average person in even religious life has never experienced the discipline of daily recording himself, what he does, what he thinks, and why. If he did this, you would discover that life as we live it every day is far more educational and beneficial than we are inclined to suspect. We think of life as just a series of events through which we pass and we do the best we can and we hope we last to the end of the month. But this is not really living. The individual who lives without purpose and uh, does not make some personal unfoldment as the result of life is missing the opportunity which nature has provided. We are here for a reason. And that reason is not merely to ignore the laws of living. We are not here to do as we please in a universe that is ruled by an orderly procedure. Our real reason for being here is to discipline ourselves and keep harmony with the principles of our own existence. We are here to grow. And growth means to give proper attention uh, to the needs of the self. Now, growth is not the result of catering to self. Growth is not the result of recording only what we want to think nicely about. It is not intended to cause us to be self-obsessed or fixed in such attitudes. Rather, it is a reason why we should not make mistakes that we make every day. We should not allow pressures within ourselves undisciplined attitudes, mistakes that may go all the way back to childhood and infancy, to continue to plague our patterns of living. Every once in a while we get a chronic example of this in a problem of a person who has had several marriages, perhaps three or four marriages. Now if this person had kept an exact record of their relationships and their attitudes through these four sessions, they would have learned a number of valuable things about themselves and why their relationships with others failed. Rather, they simply took the attitude that the marriage partner was impossible and started out and tried again. It never occurred to them that they were the one that was impossible. And they will never believe it unless there is written a record and a proper amount of witnesses and perhaps have the thing notarized. This, there's got to be some proof that the individual is wrong. And the only way he can get that proof is by being honest. And the only power that keeps him honest, for the most part, is a continual revelation of his own ineptitudes constantly facing his own mistakes, realizing that they are his, and that no matter how much other people try to please him, they will never be able to save him from the consequences of his own wrong attitudes. So if we start in with some kind of a regular recording procedure, we can begin to discover the weaknesses in our own thinking. Many people are what we might term quick thinkers. They go from one thought to another very rapidly without giving weight uh, to the attitude that they are holding. Prejudice is a very common form of this. And a prejudiced person will remain so till the end of his life unless he records the prejudice. If at the first time he develops a prejudice, he writes down what he did not like and why he did not like it in this particular person. 
he will then go along and pretty soon he comes across someone else and he has the same attitude again. And gradually he comes to find out by careful thinking that this prejudice is in himself. If he keeps his records correctly, he will also discover that he has lost something by being falsely prejudiced. He has lost opportunities to grow. In many cases he loses a job. In some instances he breaks a home. But gradually his prejudice is forced upon him for consideration if he writes it down. If, therefore, he begins to write a biography of a prejudice and includes this in his records of his own life, he may in due time outgrow this by discovering the fallacy of it. He will also occasionally find a person against whom he was prejudiced turns out to be a very good and sincere friend. This should not be allowed to just drift by with no one paying any attention to it. We should never dislike a person and then suddenly like them and not know why. All of these changes of moods, all of these reactions to circumstances should be duly and properly noted so that the person can go back over a day, a month, or a year and try to discover, if possible, what he has gained from a series of incidents which for the most part he might pay, uh, pass over without a second thought. Also, he can keep record of his preferences. He can keep track of the number of hours he spent in front of a television. He can keep track of the uh, programs that he turns on and those he does not turn on. He can examine himself to find out, if possible, why he is particularly uh, appealing, appealed to by crime pictures or by sports or by research projects. He will start learn something about himself. And when he gets through watching a program, he should be able to say to himself, what has this done that in some way increases or improves my own consciousness? What have I learned that is helping me to grow, to become a better person? Have I a secret tendency to turn the program off, but rather let it run through? All of these actions bear witness to character specifications and specialties, and we have a right to understand them. These characteristics all add up over a period of 60, 70, 80 years into a lifetime, and a lifetime that is lived on the basis of attitudes that cannot be sustained, that are not reasonable, that are not factual and that add nothing to the positive growth of the individual. If we uh, miss all the opportunities to be better, wiser, and more thoughtful, then life as an experience is an almost complete failure. We are here to learn not to dawdle our way through the years. We are here to find out how to be better and to do better and to understand more and dedicate more of ourselves to common good. If none of these uh, elements are encouraged or nourished and we do not even realize that we are wasting a lifetime, then it is our own loss. And only a record can be made to show what these processes really are. One problem is to observe the warrior. Now, the warrior constitutes a person for whom a complete column in such a record should be set up to find out how many times that individual has worried about something that never happened, worried or feared that which, when it occurred, was not difficult at all, worried about other people when these other people had no interest in this uh, effort of their friend. People that we are worrying about are probably also worrying about us. And uh, we know that they need our help, but we, they, we do not realize that we need their help. We have to learn these things. And writing it down, underscoring it, comparing the situation on Monday with the consequences on Tuesday, day by day, uh, monitoring conduct can be a very important experience. Now, most people are not much interested in building a great big book in the course of a few months of all their peculiarities. 
Therefore, we can use a sampling process. We do not need to write down everything. But we can take two or three areas in which we know we are in trouble most of the time. Where is this lack of patience, lack of insight, lack of kindness. That in one way or another we are spoiling chances. And we are failing in the experience of becoming better every day. And the thing that is preventing this improvement is a series of negative patterns in our own minds. Therefore, we can take three or four distinct difficulties which have been allowed to increase over a long period of time, which we have perhaps burdened ourselves with since childhood, and we can gradually weed them out, discover the fallacy and uselessness of them that all this worrying put together has not done one thing to advance our insights unless we learn how to stop worrying. Now, worrying is something that is natural to human beings. Even we find evidences of it in the animal kingdom. But worry is a misuse of energy. And uh, as many of the ancient scholars pointed out, everything that is important in life is worthy of deep and careful consideration. But nothing should be handled by fretting and fussing. Everything that comes along as a problem should be solved in the spirit of internal enlightenment. We should always be living the best that we are and the best that we know. And if we do this and come against a complicated problem, then we have inner resources which will help us to find a new solution to a new problem because of the general attitude that we are holding. Little by little, therefore, we correct old faults, build new strengths, and become more useful to ourselves and those around us. So this record is something that is well worth bearing in mind. Another record type of thing was uh, developed in Egypt. And in this particular type of record, uh, the individual who began a study, for instance, a person who intended to become a physician or intended to become a priest in the temple or intended to become a builder of palaces or houses. This individual in his instructional period studied usually with the masters of his arts or sciences. And when he was ready for his graduation, he was supposed to prepare a paper, a dissertation, the idea of the dissertation has continued to annoy young people now. A dissertation is usually a headache. And a, a doctoral thesis is enough to cause a person to collapse in one way or another. Because it is meaningless. It tells nothing that is real. But the idea behind it in the first place was really a very good one. This dissertation should be a simple statement on the part of the graduate of how he wanted to use what he had learned for the common benefit of mankind. He was so supposed to explain how he would proceed if he was to build a school, if he was to create a group of people, if he was to perform some public service, that his knowledge was to be dedicated to the help of all living things. And he was going to explain in his case how he actually intended to do this. What his steps would be, one, two, three. How he would proceed after graduation to make the education he had received valuable to others. This habit of preparing these outlines should be revised and revived. It should come down to us that education is an asset which must be dedicated. It must be given to the source of all need for the advancement of the and enrichment of all good in nature. Otherwise, its primary purpose has failed. So here's another problem of how the individual is going to take what he knows and use it. Now, perhaps you may decide that he is going to take what he knows for further research, that he has found a problem that others haven't solved, and to this he will dedicate his life if it is useful and necessary. So he has a, pl a project and a plan which he is expected to fulfill. 
and if he varies from this plan or fails to uh, fulfill it, he is subject to criticism and condemnation not only by his own teachers but by society in general. Another interesting phase of keeping records you probably have observed in TV programs. Uh, you find an archaeologist out in the field working in a mud hole or, or an old wall or something. But if he has a pick in one hand, he has a pencil and paper in the other. Every single thing he finds out he's writing down. Every step of his discoveries, every inch of soil that he has turned is noted. Where and how the artifacts were accumulated is carefully recorded. Or out in the field, someone is studying animal life. They also are watching the animal very uh, carefully, but they have a paper and pad and pencil with them. They have watched and studied the habits of these various animals and have recorded them accurately in order that science and uh, ecology in general might be of greater service to the preservation of various forms of life. Now, what we really need most of all sometimes is that pad and pencil to discover the eccentricities of ourselves. We must discover which layer of what we are functioning in and what we have dug out of our own subconscious. And if it is no good, we should analyze it away, understand it, and realize why it is worthless to us. All this careful self-estimation, however, has to avoid one danger, and that is excessive self-centeredness. The individual who is just self-centered and is doing all this simply because he wants to be a more arrogant or successful or is concerned primarily with financial improvement, this is a failure. But if he is honest in the recording of his own attitudes, it will in many instances demonstrate to him why the search for fame or the search for wealth is a delusion. But as long as he believes in it, he will suffer for it. And until he records day by day the incidents leading up to accumulation and later do the uh, scattering or disseminating of that which he has accumulated, until these facts are clear, he is not in possession of the real essential knowledge he needs. He can be warned and told by every counselor in the country that he should change his ways. But unless there are facts that cannot be denied by his own mind, he will probably continue in his present course. But when these things that happen on his own skin are brought home to him by thoughtfulness, and he realizes again and again what he is doing to himself, then gradually facts can take over. And facts come in as a useful way of pointing out a mistake. And where the mistakes are reduced, the life of the individual is markedly improved. Also, there are areas in which the person should note for instance, the ability to carry responsibility. Is the individual by nature very thoughtful, very careful, very skillful in problems re uh, resulting from or involving accepting responsibilities? The individual should realize his depth and his limitations in this area. He should realize that he must have certain qualities of dedication if he is to be a truly responsible person. If he is careless in these matters, losses result, and the individual does not accept the experience, he keeps right on making trouble and sometimes gets himself into desperately difficult circumstances. Every phase of life must be made reasonable, must be made according to natural reason and natural law. The law of cause and effect is just about immutable. And in the common experiences of living, every generation has gone through the tribulation of setting in motion causes, but not being willing to accept the results. If, therefore, the individual through experience recorded in his own life sees the necessity of accepting